Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I'm hanging out here in the woods in western Pennsylvania and with me today is a very special mushroom. That mushroom is the black trumpet mushroom. Some people call it horn of plenty and the Latin name is Craterellus phallix. And it's very difficult to see, but this is it right here. You can see me wiggling this one around. There's some back here. Here's a cluster right here, right over here, and there's one back here. So all of these are black trumpet mushrooms. And this is a choice edible mushroom that typically fruits throughout the summer months and you don't really find this one in the grocery stores. You almost always have to find it out in the wild unless somebody's foraging it for you. It's very difficult to cultivate this mushroom because it's a mycorrhizal fungus. It forms a network with various hardwood trees and we're gonna learn all about that. So you almost always have to find this in the wild. And so in this video, what we're gonna do is discuss its identification, maybe a couple lookalikes for the black trumpet mushroom, and we're gonna learn some tips on how to properly find this mushroom, locate it, in the wild. So stay tuned. First up, we're going to talk about the identification of the black trumpet mushroom. Okay, so I'm at another spot where black trumpets are growing, not too far away from that first spot. And this is a little sunnier spot, you can tell because the sun's hitting my face. So you can see some small black trumpets right here, there's one right here, there's one back here as well. And I'm actually holding a medium to smaller size specimen. So the Latin name is Craterellus phallix, and let's look at that for a second. So Craterellus means little crater or little cups because it kind of looks like a little crater in the ground. It's got a hole in it or it's hollow or vase shaped and it's blackish in appearance. And phallix is Latin for deceptive. So this is a deceptive little crater fungus. Deceptive because it's kind of hard to see because of its color. And this is in the chanterelle family or the cantharellaceae family. And so like the members of the chanterelle family, you don't see true gills on the chanterelle mushrooms or you don't see true gills on the black trumpet mushroom. You look at the fertile surface and you see that there are slight ridges, not really any folds on this, but it almost looks like a little vein pattern and that's about it. So no true gills and not even a pore surface on this mushroom or chanterelle mushrooms. Now the black trumpet mushroom doesn't really have a clearly defined cap and stem, it just all seems to blend right in. And altogether it could be between one and five inches tall and nearer to the top of the mushroom it could be about three inches wide. And as I mentioned, it's funnel shaped like many members of the chanterelle family and it's hollow so you can kind of just look right through it. And near the top you can see it kind of has a wavy margin. Now the color of this mushroom varies but it's typically grayish to blackish and it can become colored like the spores in maturity. And a spore print of Craterellus phallix is a yellowish to an orangish color. And when you look at the fertile surface or the outer side of the black trumpet mushroom, it's typically smooth with slight vein-like ridges. So you're not going to see gills and you're not going to see pores. And this mushroom is typically thin flesh, so it's not very thick, it's not very stout, and oftentimes as this mushroom matures you'll see little splits and tears in it as well. And the black trumpet mushroom is mycorrhizal with oak trees and it comes up from the soil. So you're not really going to see it just coming up directly out of wood, you're not going to see it on trees. It's coming up out of the soil and you'll see it growing single just one at a time, you'll see them scattered, just a couple of them here and there, or sometimes you'll see them clustered, you know, one, two, three, four or five growing from one single cluster. And you typically find this summer through fall east of the Rocky Mountains. So now that we know how to properly identify black trumpet mushrooms, well, how are we going to easily find them? Because it's a deceptive little crater fungus, right? Not always easy to see. I've got four tips for you to help you narrow down your search for your beloved black trumpet mushrooms. And the first one is to look in oak dominated areas. Look where the oak trees are. And all around me are oak trees. Most of the videos that I shoot for Learn Your Land are in oak dominated forests. We have a lot of them here in Pennsylvania. And so I'm usually spending time where there are oak trees. And so if I do come out in the summer months, chances are good after a nice rainfall that I will find black trumpets because there are so many oak trees around here. And as I mentioned, black trumpets are mycorrhizal with oak trees. They hook up symbiotically where both species benefit. Now black trumpets aren't only mycorrhizal with oak trees. We're gonna get to that in a second, but they are mycorrhizal with oak trees. That's a good place to look. If you're unfamiliar with oak trees, I've got some tips for you. So they're among our largest and most well-known trees. We have several species here in Pennsylvania and they are the species that produce the acorns. So just look in the areas where there are acorns and chances are 100% that you're going to find an oak tree. Now, whenever we look for oak trees, there are typically two main groups that we could split that genus Quercus into. We've got the red oak group, which is also known as the black oak group. Then we have the white oak group. So the red oak group or the black oak group, they have leaves with bristle tips or pointed tips around their lobes, like this one right here. There are points around here. And they typically have acorns that mature in two seasons rather than one season. 
So right behind me is a very well-known species here in Pennsylvania. This is our red oak tree within the red oak group. So this is Quercus rubra, and it grows to be about 100 feet tall. It's one of our larger species, and the bark is a dark gray-brown fissured pattern. What's very unique about Quercus rubra is that it has ski tracks on the bark pattern. So whenever you look at it, especially near to the top, you will see that there are long, you know, like two or three foot long ski tracks running vertically. Or it almost looks like somebody took a hot iron and singed the bark. So these are the leaves from a red oak tree. And you can see that there are lobes and that there are bristle tips around each lobe. So this is the red oak tree, Quercus rubra. Whenever I'm looking for black trumpets, I do look for this tree first. The other group of oak trees is known as the white oak group. So we just talked about the red oak group and Quercus rubra, the red oak tree, is within the red oak group. But there's a white oak group. And typically they have leaves that are rounded in their lobes and they have acorns that mature in one season. And so this is another tree that I find associated with black trumpets. And this is the white oak tree, Quercus alba, within that white oak group. And it typically has lighter bark grayish, light gray bark that separates into vertical strips. So you can see there are vertical strips right here. And these are the leaves right here, and as I mentioned, they've got rounded lobes rather than pointed lobes. So these are some trees that I look for when I'm trying to locate my black trumpet mushrooms. Now, research shows that black trumpets aren't only mycorrhizal with oak trees. It seems that black trumpets are mycorrhizal with that family of trees, which is Phagaceae, which also includes chestnut trees, Castanea species. And people also find black trumpets associated with beech trees. But usually where there are beech trees, there are usually oak trees as well. And so look in those areas. Also, research shows that Crowder Alice phallus, the species that I'm referring to, black trumpet, is mycorrhizal with Pinus virginiana, which is the Virginia pine. It's a two-needled pine, it's a smaller pine tree, which typically grows throughout the Appalachian region. So it seems that if you just look in mixed woods, both with conifers and hardwoods, especially oak trees, you might find black trumpets. And research shows that black trumpets might be associated with hemlock trees, suga trees as well. So look in those areas, but I typically have the most luck looking in oak-dominated areas for black trumpet mushrooms. The second tip has to do with where specifically I'm looking underneath all these trees. Am I looking at sticks? Am I looking at logs? Am I looking at the leaf litter? Not really. I'm looking in two main areas underneath all these trees. Number one, mossy areas. If you remember at the beginning of this video where I was filming those black trumpets? It was in mossy areas. That's where I have the most luck. Look for the moss and look for black trumpets in the summer months. You're not always going to find it coming up out of moss, but I seem to have the most luck looking in mossy areas. But you'll also find it along dirt paths. You'll find it in the dirt in the woods. You don't really find it coming up, you know, in large clusters in the leaf litter, but in dirt trails, dirt paths, that's a good place to look as well. But I tend to have more luck in the mossy areas, and I like harvesting from mossy areas more because it tends to be cleaner whenever you harvest from mossy areas. The third tip is to look after a good rain. So whenever it's raining, you don't want to maybe look that day if it hasn't rained in a while, but after a good day long rain or two day long rain, scout out the area, you know, a day after that, two days after, three days after it, a week after that, and you might see black trumpets appearing. If it's been dry for a long time, you might not see a lot of black trumpets. These are very thin mushrooms and they tend to dry out rather easily and they don't always seem to fruit whenever it is dry. But after a good rainfall, you know, last week here in Pennsylvania, it just rained every single day. So this whole week I'm finding a lot of black trumpets. And the fourth tip, this is an important one, once you go through everything that we talked about so far, go slow. You have to go really slow with black trumpets. You can't treat it like chicken of the woods. You know, it's a bright orange mushroom. You could be driving 80 miles per hour on the highway and find chicken of the woods. These aren't large, bolete-like mushrooms. These are smaller mushrooms. And that color just blends in so well with everything else around here. So you have to go really slow, but look for the oak trees, you know, look for the beech trees, look at the mossy areas, look in the dirt trail areas, and just take your time with it. And whenever you do finally find one, keep looking around, because chances are good that you'll find more. So go through all those tips, you might increase your chances of finding black trumpet mushrooms. Now I know some of you might be thinking, are there any toxic lookalikes? Are there any lookalikes whatsoever? How do I know that I have the black trumpet mushroom and I didn't harvest something that it's going to affect me in a very negative way? Well, the black trumpet mushroom is one of the easiest ones to identify. It's not the easiest to locate because of its color and size, how it blends in, but it's one of the easiest to identify. If you go through all those characteristics that we mentioned, you know, it's hollow, it's vase shaped, it looks like a black trumpet coming up out of the ground. It does not have gills. It has slight ridges maybe on its fertile surface. Then you almost definitely have the black trumpet mushroom or one of its related species. But there are two other mushrooms that I can think of that might be growing this time of year that at first glance might resemble 
black trumpet mushrooms. And the first one is Inosibi taquamenonensis. I talked about this in detail in my early summer mushroom hunting video. So go back and watch that one to positively identify that mushroom. That one is definitely not edible and it has gills on the underside. So it's a typical cap and stem mushroom with gills. Black trumpet does not have gills. The second one would be Old Man of the Woods, which is a Strobilomyces species. That is a bolete-like mushroom, so it has pores on the underside. And that mushroom is very, very velvety. So again, the black trumpet mushroom does not have pores and it does not have gills, so that eliminates both Inosopy taquamenonensis and it eliminates Old Man of the Woods. Other than that, I think you're pretty much good to go. So just a word on harvesting black trumpet mushrooms. Should we cut them or should we pull them? What should we do? Well, I like to cut the mushrooms before I bring them home or put them in a basket to keep them relatively clean. So this is one that I cut right here. You can see there's a nice cut mark with a knife. If you pull them up, you're tending to pull up some moss and some dirt along with it. And you're just going to, you know, get your other black trumpet mushrooms dirty in the bag and then you might get this into your meals as well. And it's not going to be very fun. So I recommend cutting them before you put them in your bag and bring them home. And then whenever you bring them home, you can do many things with them you can dehydrate them because these mushrooms dehydrate really well and then they rehydrate really well. Just make sure they're clean. Just look through these little cracks and crevices, pull out any debris, then you could dehydrate them in a dehydrator at a low setting or you could put them out in the sun. They don't need a lot of time to dehydrate because they're very, very thin. Then they rehydrate really well because you could put them in a bowl of water 10, 15 minutes and then that soaking liquid will be very flavorful as well so you can cook with that and then you can cook these mushrooms. And if you do just bring these home, you can put them in the refrigerator, fresh in a paper bag. You don't want to put it in a plastic bag. That'll hasten spoilage. A paper bag, then you can cook these up. They don't need a lot of time to cook because they're thin. They're somewhat fragile. Unlike other mushrooms, you know, like the honey mushroom, that one requires a more lengthy time in order to render it edible and palatable, essentially. But not so with this one. Just a little bit of time, some heat, and you're good to go with the black trumpet mushroom. Now it smells really good. It's slightly fruity, slightly sweet and earthy, and it imparts all this into your meal. So that's why a lot of people revere the black trumpet mushroom, and that's why it's better than most other mushrooms that's out there. So it truly is a very delectable mushroom. It's always fun to find this mushroom because it's not the easiest to locate in the woods, and I encourage you to get out there and look for the black trumpet mushroom, also known as Horn of Plenty or Craterellus phallus. I hope I answered a lot of questions for you. If I didn't, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching this video. I encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on social media at Learn Your Land so we can stay in touch with each other. Thanks again. Happy Black Trumpet Mushroom Hunting.